Hi. Hope you all are doing well today. I thought we would stick with our water theme and, and read another book today. This time we're not traveling to the ocean. We're going to visit Over and Under the Pond. And it's by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Over and Under the Pond. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there? I ask. Under the pond? Mom says. <clears throat> Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles whoop and swirl. Skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through wavy grass, while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. I bet that fish is hungry, huh? Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One two, three. They slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close, cockeree. Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larvae builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low-hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water. A mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. Let's see there, see the tadpole? Tadpoles growing up, isn't it? They're starting to lose their tail and growing legs and turning into a frog, aren't they? And through metamorphosis. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses. It takes one long-legged step and strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. <laughs> Over the pond we drift, heads tipped to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Hmm.
under the pond and otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster fast jaws. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears into the dark. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto the shore. As a far-off loon calls goodnight, the sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles. Over the pond, the prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond. The end. Was that a good book? I like that one. And we have a lot of ponds around here that have a lot of that same kind of wildlife, don't they? The woodpecker that was over the pond. I'm sure all of us have seen the frogs and, and this time of year the tadpoles probably are just hatch and then they'll start to grow and turn into frogs they'll lose their tails and they'll grow legs what else do we see in here our beavers and our and lots of fish there's all kinds of fish there wasn't it so this was a fun little book to read i hope you all enjoyed it and um i hope that you will keep in mind all of the important things that we need to do to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep our water so if you're able to get out this summer and go fishing or swimming or boating or rafting or even just hiking around areas where there's water make sure that you're cleaning up after yourself properly not littering or pouring anything out on the ground that doesn't belong there that could possibly get pollute our ground or our lovely waters we have okay and I'd also like to challenge you that the next time you get to visit a pond I want you to think about this book and I want you to look closely at what living things you see over the pond and look and see if you can spot some living things under the pond and see if you find any of the same wildlife that we've read about in this story today okay i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you again tomorrow to share another story okay thanks bye bye